All right. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Dobara. I am Samin Ansari, and I am the creative director at Dobara. Um, Dobara is a nonprofit network of volunteers from all over the world, comprised of all age groups, all focused on senior well being and promoting healthy, active aging. When we speak of well being at Dobara, we include emotional, mental, and social along with physical well being, because all of these together are components that make up the quality of our lives. Um, at Dabara, what we do is based off of the science of gerontology and a collection of best practices gleaned from several studies from around the world that have researched and delved into what makes a healthy and happy senior citizen. Dubara in Hindi means once again, and over the past seven years since its creation, Dubara has been constantly growing, adapting, and evolving. In our own special way, we are creating our own blue zone of contented longevity through our senior well-being network that empowers and encourages our members to flourish and thrive as happy senior citizens through life after retirement. Uh, we currently have about 250 members following our innovative and creative virtual well-being program. And our strength lies in all of our volunteers. So today's session is part of this virtual well-being program. And this year, we are doing a special spotlight on caregivers and caregiving. Um, Dr. Ashank Mishra is a volunteer who has very generously volunteered his time to share his knowledge and insights today on caregiving tips for caregivers caring for people with neurodegenerative illnesses. Um, this is part of a three-part series. Last week, Dr. Ashank uh, walked us through some misinformation and myths linked with dental care. Uh, we will have that video up on our website, so you can always go back and watch it. It was very, very uh, helpful. And the one next week is going to be uh, more centric on certain illnesses and dental care. Uh, I'm going to, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit hard for me to do an introduction on Dr. Shank because he has so many achievements and accomplishments. So I'm going to try and keep them brief. Um, to begin with, Dr. Shank is currently based in Hyderabad, India. He did his MDS from NTR, uh, University of Health Sciences in India, but then he continued, and I feel like he studied all over the world and his knowledge, encompassing his knowledge. He's studied in Vienna, he studied in the US, and he's also studied in Glasgow. Uh, currently, he is a visiting professor in the Department of Periodontology and Research in EIMS HEI Malta. He's been awarded under the category of excellence in periodontology and laser dentistry by the International Exemplary um, Research and Performance in 2018 and 2019 consecutively. He has a multiple number of things going on, and he has a clinical practice in periodontology, laser dentistry, and implant surgery in Hyderabad called Dental Dontics Family Smile Care Center. I will put that information on our website, so you, anyone who would like to consult him privately would be free to do so. Um, with this introduction, I will hand it over to you, Dr. Ashank. Take it away. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much yes. for the introduction. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, good evening, uh, all of my Indian friends, and good afternoon to all the European friends who are there all over the world. Uh, I hope my voice is very clear and audible. Yeah. So I begin my session two uh, with Dobara. As uh, Samin has rightly said, Dobara in Hindi in India is once again, or the second time 
So it has got a very important integral meaning when you actually look into. And uh, we will go through very, very important tips for oral hygiene, which caregivers should be aware of whenever they are into the management of the patients with neurological disorders. Okay. So the most important thing is uh, the tips which I'll be giving all throughout the presentation is for the caregivers and also some tips for the dentist as well so that they can manage the patients with neurodegenerative disorders at ease. Now, before that, we try to understand the progression of a neurodegenerative disorder. Now, uh, you need to understand what do you mean by neurodegenerative diseases. Neurodegenerative diseases means the diseases which broadly falls under this conditions is Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. Now, this picture actually is a very uh, conventional picture which shows the progression of the disease where you can see how the progression of the disease from green to yellow to red trees, they lose and shed. But that's how the memory or the degen or the neurological uh, matter of a patient or of an individual degenerates with age, with aging or with the disease. Eventually, you need to also understand that why are we discussing it? when concerned to oral hygiene tips and how important is neurological diseases with the diseases of mouth or which I should say periodontal diseases or gum diseases which I mentioned in the previous webinar as well. You all uh, know very well that Parkinson's disease is a disease which happens with aging and it is a disease which basically happens when one of the center of your brain, the neurons of your brain which are responsible for doing movement or motion are having or they lack secreting something called as the dopamine. What I've heard about is a dopamine. It's a neurotransmitter which actually helps for the motion or movement of a person, of an individual. So Parkinson's disease is something which actually initially starts with a little tremors in a hand or maybe in a finger or your foot. It increases to rigidity of your arms, of your extremities, goes to a very higher level where you have typical rigidity, slowness of movement, the tremors are there, muscle activity becomes absolutely high enough, speech difficulty, articulation problem, chewing problem, mastication problem, affecting the patient's physical and mental well-being and patient goes into depression. That is something very common which happens eventually with Parkinson's patient. Alzheimer's disease is one of the major diseases which causes dementia. It starts from a mild memory loss, eventually goes to a major memory loss where, where, where an individual is totally uh, dependent on someone for its activities. It's, it's basically causing dementia eventually. So these are the two conditions which broadly come under neurodegenerative diseases, which I will talk to you about in the today's session. These are the dental conditions which we notice in these type of patients. It starts from a dental decay. You all know what dental decay is. Decay. Periodontal diseases or gum diseases, which I mentioned to you. Then there's something called as drooling of saliva. These patients may sometimes have excessive salivation in their mouth, where the saliva drools out, which is called saluria, technically. Then dry mouth. Some of the patients also suffer from dry mouth. That means there's no saliva in the mouth or very minimal saliva where the patient feels dry mouth. Which, not, which, which actually doesn't happen because of the disease. It, it actually happens because of the drugs which patients are taking and those side effects are causing dry mouth. Some of the patients may notice orofacial pain. It means the pain all around your face, your mouth and inside your, inside your mouth, including your tongue and cheeks. You feel burning mouth syndrome. You feel burning mouth. Mastication disorders, as I said, chewing disorders, difficulty in chewing, especially in Parkinson's because of the patients having a lot of tremors. Because of that, you have your insufficiency, your motor insufficiency increases because of the cognitive disorders, the problem happens. Patients with a lot of anxiety and stress will end up into teeth grinding, which is called as bruxism, where they have grinding of teeth, which happens in night, night grinding, which is called as very popularly. 
subjective taste impairment sometimes and i will talk about what are the dental treatments and the uh, and uh, maybe the management of uh, the dental treatments by a dentist itself and sometimes by a caregivers as well now something which is very important is this 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 is a picture which shows uh, what exactly i mean by uh, teeth grinding teeth grinding means the clinical picture appears something like this where your teeth if you notice that uh, the height of the teeth is reduced the upper part of the teeth the enamel is almost worn out and you can see the inner part of the tooth that means because of the grinding between the two teeth the 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 outer layer of the teeth is worn out and then the patient starts getting a lot of sensitivity and pain sometimes jaw pain soreness of jaws that also happen and this is all sometimes because of sleep disorders anxiety or stress or maybe a dental problem also and this is also something very common which we see in neurological diseases patients now when i talk about gum disease i think uh, the gum disease has got various stages and you need to understand that gum disease as i said last time is 90% prevalent globally everyone has gum disease it starts from basic gum disease which is gingivitis to a higher level of disease where your tooth becomes loose or mobile which is called as periodontitis you can see a picture which shows the healthy tooth and a diseased tooth you can see the diseased tooth also there this is a clinical picture which we see commonly we show the bad state of gums and this is what happens you can see all over the plaque you can see so much of tartar you can see bleeding you can see gum swelling you can see clinically these are the conditions which happen in a moderate to severe gum disease which patient land up into when the oral hygiene is lacking when a patient's oral hygiene maintenance is bad patient saliva content is less there's no lubrication in the mouth there's no moisturization in the mouth what happens basically the tartar gets deposited the gums get swollen up and eventually the teeth starts becoming mobile or start becoming loose so this is what is the fate of a gum disease as i said gum disease has got four stages and these are the four stages which happens in gum disease so from a healthy gums to an advanced periodontitis so what happens in the last as that you lose your tooth the tooth becomes mobile you get bad breath and so on and so forth now uh, the most important concept here i would like to introduce this also i covered in fact in the last uh, session that oral health is equal to overall health so oral health the gum disease especially when i talk about oral health i'm talking about the gum disease it is very very common that when you have a severe amount of gum disease the gum disease not only is restricted or to per se to your mouth itself but it spreads all over your body it spreads to your blood vessels it, spreads, it goes to your brain where you have neurological diseases it goes to your affects your heart by atherosclerosis it goes to every part of your overall uh, body organs and affect them individually whatever the risk factor i don't say it independently deals with it but there are multiple risk factors and gum disease is one of the risk factors one of the risk factors so you need to understand like especially with diabetes also it is one of the major risk factors which is accepted by the american dental uh, diabetic association and dental associations as well so even in the case of neurological diseases also there are evidences where gum disease can lead to contribution to the severity of parkinsons and alzheimer's disease they don't cause independently but they contribute to these diseases severity as and when the situation of the gum disease becomes worsen and the severity of the neurological diseases eventually fall into the later stages now as i said when you compare to health and disease that when there is a diseased gums then you have a severe typical type of a gum disease it leads to lot of bacteria and lot of harmful substances which are released into your blood stream which may reach to your brain through the neurons through the pathways and cause some deficiencies or some issues into your neurological pathways which can lead to this type of diseases or contribute to parkinson's disease i would like to give you one very excellent uh, evidence from uh, neurology journal which says that maybe all of them who are using dentures know that sometimes uh, with the dentures we advise you something called as a denture cream something like a denture powder what you put on your denture and you wear a denture that's basically for a good retention and you will not believe that an unusual source of zinc is there in those denture creams or denture powders or denture adhesives it is commonly called as i'm talking about something like this now 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 you can relate to me what i'm talking about 
what you put on a denture and you wear when sometimes the denture is loose or maybe you feel psychologically when i put this it's like a glue is going to the when it adheres to my denture into your mouth it will not fall off when you are talking or eating something so this is a very important aspect to understand that this could be a source of zinc and zinc contributes to severity of parkinson's disease understand that when the zinc is more it also leads to less copper hypocupuremia and hyperzincemia so when that happens it worsens the parkinson's disease so this is something very interesting that caregivers should understand that a denture cream should not contain zinc or i advise zinc free denture adhesives for neuro deficit patients this is something very important to be notice which i'm sure most of them are unaware of so that that much of uh, intricacies are there when these elements are important in causing the problem one element i have discussed is zinc now fda in 2009 has done a very landmark statement maybe when you see this picture you understand what is this exactly these are silver fillings conventionally in dentistry from long time we do or we used to do silver amalgam fillings these are the silver fillings which are done. definitely very good quality of filling they stay for long time maybe for life they are very hard they they are very good thing but in today's modernized dentistry do not advise to go for these silver fillings because silver fillings have got to do something with mercury so whenever we have a silver filling it's called silver amalgam you know what amalgam is amalgam is something when you mix metals with mercury so it comes with a liquid mercury and what is to be considered is the mercury content mercury is something which has to be considered here mercury in this case the fda has opposed the use of silver dental fillings for parkinson's patients this also is something very very important which has to be considered for a patient for a caregiver and as well for a dentist that do not go for silver amalgam fillings or a silver fillings in today's practice because they are they are uh, in a process that they need to use mercury even though there are very stringent criteria and we use it with a very minimal mercury content but then still still the fda opposes the use of silver filling especially in parkinson's patient because the contribution of mercury has got the absolute neurotoxic effect neurotoxic means it's absolute toxic to your neurological system so these are two very important things which are scientifically proven and evidence based which i wanted to start with and share with you all okay now uh, we start with some of the tips i would like to give to the caregivers regarding the oral hygiene and its maintenance okay now yes uh, what do you basically advise to the caregivers to take care of that start giving the patients a long gripped brushes which has got a very soft bristles maybe so that the brush reaches the corner of the mouth because the patients cannot have because they have a motor incapability there is a cognitive impairment and there is a motor deficit where the brush cannot you can't hold your hand and go and brush the last wisdom tooth there right so use a longer handle grip brushes with soft bristles which can reach to every corner of your mouth even to your back too that is something important or else go for an electric toothbrush make sure that the individual brushes after every meal or at least rinses with the normal water after every meal you can go for a powered floss instead of a regular floss you have a, you have a regular floss which are there which i mentioned to you before but then for uh, these patients we can go for a powered floss or maybe a water pick device water pick is something which is used for irrigation or flushing of the debris the food debris which is there between your bridges uh, uh, below your dentures between your teeth and all those areas antimicrobial or antibacterial mouth rinses because if the if the if the brushing efficiency is definitely compromised so at least the mouthwash can reach all the areas of the mouth and clean and flush off the bacteria which is there not only into not only of your gums but onto on on, uh, on your tongue on your palate on your cheeks whatever the the, the whole oral cavity the whole oral cavity forms an ecosystem right fluoride toothpaste which is very important and zinc free denture adhesives which is very important then uh, this is an example of a powered floss 
mind you i am not marketing for uh, oral b this is just a picture just to show you all that you can go for a powered floss this is a powered floss where you press a button and it flosses between the teeth which makes easy for a patient who has got a motor deficit to do it or even for a caregiver to do it so caregiver can focus on these things where you can advise for a longer handle brushes maybe you can have uh, for a powered flosses this is something uh, which i was talking to you about a water flosser or a water pick where you have a tip i'm going to show you what exactly it does and how exactly it functions then this is a electric toothbrush you can go for an electric toothbrush you know what is an advantage of an electric toothbrush you don't need a specific technique for it you can just it's a battery operated just switch it off and it cleans the teeth so ideally we don't advise it for younger individuals or 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 for the people who can actually do it manually it is just for the people who actually cannot do it we advise powered toothbrushes or electric toothbrushes so more effective is something called as a water flosser or a water pick so this is how it flushes can you see the dental gaps can you see the flosser you have a nozzle which flushes the water it could be a water it could be a, an antimicrobial solution which you can add up into the jar which is provided with the machine you can just press it off and flushes off irrigates your dental area cleans your dental area makes it very very clean and effective for you this is something which is very very helpful for patients and very easy for caregivers to do it how a caregiver will do it i will let you know last uh, session there were many people who wanted to know about water flosser and as i commented i wanted to show it this time so i had to include this video for a better understanding and then anyone who wants to uh, procure this just let me know i'll i'll just send you a, a link where exactly you can take it because it's not available directly in the the pharmacy places and all so and 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 when you go online you have got hundreds of water flossers so which exactly you are supposed to procure based upon your dental condition we would advise you so i am open for that if anyone needs it just let me know i will guide you regarding that so now these are few of the tips for the caregivers now i now i have already mentioned before that what caregivers are supposed to use for an easy method of oral hygiene now i will tell you how are they going to use or how are they going to help the patients to clean now if a patient is having natural teeth in their mouth how will a caregiver help that patient first thing the caregiver always has to make sure that he has to stand he or her has to stand behind the patient you have to stand behind the patient and help the patient to brush the same way so that patient feel like you stand behind the patient and you help the patient to brush because the pain so the so the patient will feel it will mimic the natural way of brushing not in front of the patient and you brush behind the patient and you brush use the patient's strongest hand for brushing make the patient himself brush hold the patient's hand go behind the patient and help her or help him to brush something very important make sure that the patient brushes flosses with the way they actually you assist them in doing it if they are not able to do by themselves then you have to do it maybe at that time you may have to come to the side Like like what we call in dentistry, the twelve o'clock position, maybe a nine o'clock position or a six o'clock position, and you help the patient to do it. And never throw the brush or maybe the floss sometimes because it's disposable. Don't flush it in the toilet. So you have to make sure that the floss is rolled up and thrown in the dustbin. Complete. Make sure that that is something important. Make sure you use a very soft brush. And this also I can help you all to know which. brand and which soft brushes ultra soft brushes or sensitive brushes you can use based on patient specific 
you can go for an electric toothbrushes also and you have to make sure that the patient or even you using your force don't put a double force and try to brush very hard because the the brush is soft even though aggressive tooth brushing is not indicated for these patients because aggressive tooth brushing basically leads to something called as abrasion that means you 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 will worn out your enamel unnecessary because of an aggressive tooth brush or an aggressive tooth paste also if you use a very high aggressive tooth paste also make sure that a person rinses with warm water or a normal water at least after every meal um okay Dr. Ashank, there was a question about the rinsing, yes. if they are unable to do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I will get, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you a very good tip about this in my next two slides. Like if, this is how someone can stand behind and you can help the patient to actually brush. When you move on to, a, when, a, when a patient is wearing a complete denture, now, when we are talking about these diseases, which mostly happens in an older life. So now patients are having some partial denture. Someone has a complete denture. Someone has like, they don't have a natural teeth. Now, how will a patient do? First thing is, caregiver should learn from a dentist how to remove the denture, how to place the denture. It is not a patient. Patient may know, but patient may also guide. But you should know as a caregiver that, the, that how do you place the denture? And first you place an upper denture, then you place a lower denture. How do you remove a denture? How do you place a denture? It needs some practice, which a, or a, which a, a healthcare dental professional is going to guide you and help you for that. Both the dentures, you have to remove them and you have to clean them. See, now there are two things which are very important. Whenever you are cleaning a denture, please be careful that wherever you are cleaning, make sure that the utensil or a sink should have water filled into it because there are high chances that the denture may fall and they may break or crack. This is a tip or an idea for you. Or at least keep a towel below it, a wet towel below the denture. So there are most of the chances that when a denture drops down, it will not have cracks or fracture. Because if it cracks, again, the visits to dentist will increase. And again, you have to go for a new denture. So to avoid those things, which you can do it by yourself, is avoid uh, cleaning it directly uh, when you have an empty basin there or, that, or, or something like that. But then make sure that there's a water fill or there is a towel, there's a wet towel which doesn't allow the dentures to crack. Scrub the dentures with a denture brush or a soap. You have a denture brush and a soap, but mind you, uh, we, uh, we, we ask you not to use toothpaste for brushing your dentures. We have a denture cleanser solutions or we have a denture cleanser tablets, soaps for brushing the dentures. Brush your dentures, both the dentures, all the surfaces of the denture and clean the mouth, the jaws, the gums, because now there are no teeth, so you have gum fat, something what a, what, a, what a newborn will have. You can imagine the same thing. So you have to clean that, or sometimes you can use a denture cleanser, or maybe a warm water with half a spoon of vinegar, even you can add and try to clean your dentures. If a denture has a metal clasp on it, because most of dentures have clasp, you can use a warm water only for soaking. So you have to make sure that dentures that both the dentures are used, are, are cleansed, after when you remove the dentures, your mouth also has to be cleansed or clean. Your dentures have to be soaked overnight in a glass of water. They should never be left dry. You're supposed to soak the dentures in a glass of water the whole day and uh, the whole night. And you're not supposed to wear it in the night. And the next day morning, clean your mouth, clean the dentures, wear it. So two times cleaning of mouth, two times cleaning of denture. Now your next question will be how or I should say, why should we clean the mouth when you have no teeth? Or how should we clean the mouth when there are no teeth in the mouth? So it is not important because you're wearing denture and you're eating. So it is basically a second set of teeth which is given to you. And you need to maintain that itself and your mouth because when you wear dentures, there are a lot of changes which happens into your mouth also, which has to be considered. So you need to make sure that also something like this. This is something very important. You clean this surface of the denture, because this surface of the denture is towards the tissue, is towards the mouth, what you're holding, wearing it. So this surface of the denture will have some plaque, will have some, some moisture. So this is a very important part of the denture which has to be cleansed, which mostly you only uh, start cleaning the teeth because you are happy to clean the teeth, but not the palate. But in this case, you need to make sure that this tissue surface of the denture is also well maintained, cleaned. And these are the steps which you need to do that you clean the dentures in the morning and night, which I said, 
Use a mild liquid soap or a denture cleanser or something for cleaning, but not use a toothpaste. Brush all the surfaces of the denture well, especially the inside, the tissue surface of the denture, which is the surface which is actually used, uh, which is actually touching your oral cavity or your mouth. Clean the gums and tongue with a soft toothbrush and make sure that you dip the dentures in a glass of water and maintain them. So you need to understand that all these aspects of maintenance of dentures are very, very important. And you should know as a caregiver how to manage the denture. Firstly, how to remove the denture from the mouth, how to place it back with the, at the patient's comfort. Clean them, maintain them and clean the oral cavity also. Now comes, how do you clean the tissues, the mouth? Now, when you have to also make sure, but, 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 but first thing is the consent, that the patient should give you a consent that you can look into the patient's mouth. And what are you going to look into the patient's mouth? You will notice that the patients who are wearing dentures may have some changes in the mouth. You could see red patches, you could see white patches, you can see some swelling, you can see some uh, below the lips where the denture extends, you may see some, some uh, tissue, which is called as epulis fissuratum. You, you see bulk of tissue sometimes when the denture irritates. There may be small abrasions because the denture may cut some area. So you need to look into it. And the moment you see such changes into the mouth, you have to report to the dentist. Now, the question is what uh, uh, Mr. Meen has asked me that yes, when a patient is totally bedridden, how will the patient rinse? Yes, the answer is we cannot ask the patient to rinse. Now, there are two ways patient can rinse. Actually, a patient can if the patient can rinse closely to it, you need to get a kidney-shaped basin or a kidney-shaped uh, uh, dish where you keep near the patient's mouth and ask the patient to rinse into that. Or the same mouth rinse, what you can do is you can damp the cloth or a, or a gauze piece or a cotton piece or a gauze piece into the antimicrobial solution and you clean and massage the ridges or the gum pads of the individual, which is also almost the same. So this should help the patients because every time, maybe a patient, if a patient can, if a patient is better than but can slightly get up and then slightly rinse, then you can get the, the vessel into the patient, patient can rinse. But there are a lot of conditions, especially in Parkinson's, because of the tremor, that is lack of muscular activity or an involuntary activity where patient cannot even do that. If they do drooling of the mouth rinse, at that point of time, you should make sure that you can use a dampened gauze with antimicrobial solution and clean the tissue surface of the which is very, very important for these type of patients. I'm talking about these types of lesions, what you can see. You can see these reddish patches which happens on the palate inside because the denture is... This, this, this also happens when, when someone is not uh, removing the denture. This also happens when you're not cleaning the denture or not cleaning the ridges, also this happens. So this is also something which happens. That's why I'm telling you that you have to make sure that the mouth and the denture has to be clean because this is basically such patients are more prone to get fungal diseases into the mouth because they are immunocompromised, because they are taking a lot of medications. And this is basically because the denture is sore mouth. You get a sore mouth, you get ulcers, you get patches. And, and then till this resolve, we advise patients not to go for, not to wear dentures. So now you can understand how difficult it is for patients for mastication or chewing. So these things have to be noticed that are there any reddish patches or, or, or there is a cottage cheese appearance, like something like... Uh, curdled appearance of uh, milk, something like that in the mouth, which shows canidiasis, fungal infections, ulcers. So we need to make sure that these things are noticed on a consent of the patient. A caregiver should make sure that you look into the mouth and report to the dentist. Let me just take a picture and send to a dentist. This is what I've noticed and whether it is a pathology or it is a physiological change. And that has to be constantly kept under the uh, guidance of the dentist. Next is, what are the materials which you can use or, or, a, or a caregiver should make sure it is available when he or she is planning to take care of a patient? Should have protective gloves in hand. Lip lubrication is very important. Something like a moisturizer or a petroleum jelly to apply all over the lip because the lip becomes dry because of a dry mouth. Like of because of dehydration, a towel, which you have to come hundred percent make sure that the patient wears a small towel or a drape in front because they're drooling of the rinse of, or, or of the foam or all those things are there. Denture brushes, you should make sure that there's a liquid soap available, a soft bristle brush, a non-foaming toothpaste. 
a non-forming toothpaste because then the more and more the form is there of a toothpaste, there are more chances that the patient gets very difficult to spit around, very difficult to maintain. So we make sure that you have a less forming or a non-forming toothpaste. A mouth prop to keep the mouth open. There are different mouth props which are available, which are safety guard, and you need to understand from a dentist what type of mouth prop can be used and how to be used. Interdental, and then you should make sure that you have a set of interdental aids. Uh, you have got a, an electric brush, a power flosser, a water pick, and a kidney basin, which I'll show you what exactly a kidney basin is talking about. So these things are minimum that you have to make sure that depending upon the severity or a stage of the neurological disorder which patient is suffering from, what all materials can be in use for you to help the patient to maintain the oral hygiene. This is what I'm talking to you regarding the kidney basin, where you help the patient, the patient is able to spit immediately, sitting on the bed, patient can comfortably spit around. This is what is very portable, lightweight uh, vessel, what you can have, and patient can do it. Very, very mild nowadays, we have got non-forming toothpastes available. Even if for that, if anyone needs help, I can guide you what exactly or where exactly you can procure for it. Then you have something like this, which I mean, which I told you. Patient can you need to make sure that you drape a patient, you put a towel to a patient. Make sure that if, if a patient can get up, then you can put your mouth rinse beside a brush. Guide the patient, wear the gloves. Your protection is also important, and more than that, patient protection is also important because there are the chances of cross contamination. So that also has to be taken into consideration. So everything happens with asepsis, basic asepsis, which is necessary for the maintenance of the hygiene and that has to be done and patient can do it. Try to help and assist the patient to do it or you have to do it. But then what are the things which should be made available is something which has to be considered. And these are the list of things which I said to you to be available for the maintenance of the patient. Then this is for the dentist. Like for the dentist, if, if you come across a patient of Parkinson or Alzheimer's disease in your clinic for the management, just a brief for the dentist. And you need to understand that how the first thing is you should be aware of what all things to be considered. And as a patient or as a caregiver, you should be aware of what medications the patient is taking. There should be a very good transparency between the caregiver and the dentist so that the dentist understands the drug interaction, that the dentist understands the stage of the disease, what the patient is taking, because that is going to be very helpful for the, for the, for the dentist to proceed with the treatment plan comfortably and smoothly. So what are the easy tips for a dental healthcare profession? That first, make sure that the that for a dentist, that the whole dental office is aware that you're going to check a patient, consult a patient or treat a patient with Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease patient. Make sure that the staff makes the environment healthy and better for the individual. Schedule the appointment as short as possible, as early as possible. And as a caregiver, you should inform the dentist that if, if patient is taking Mao B inhibitor. There's a group of drugs which patients are advised because they have got a lot of interaction with the local anesthetics what is used in dental practice. So this is something very important for a dentist to know and for a caregiver to know that you need to give a thorough medical history of the patient. Patients may take antipsychotics, patients may take antidepressant, patients may take antihypertensive, patients may have dry mouth, patients may take so many things. As a dentist, you have to make sure that you consider replacing the old fillings, if there's a broken filling, if there's a fractured crown, if there's a whatever. Try to correct the patient as early in stages of the disease than going late. Because as and when the patient's disease increases, the severity of the Parkinson's or Alzheimer's diseases, patient becomes absolutely incooperative. And it becomes very difficult for the patient to walk into your clinic and do a treatment. And, and as a dentist, you should be ready to do an in-house management also when time comes. So as a dentist also, and me being a dentist also, it would, I would not mind to visit to a place and, and take care of a healthcare profession as a healthcare professional for a patient who is having so much of morbidity disorders that patient cannot walk into your clinic and help to do minimally invasive or a non-surgical way of management of the problem of the patient. And dental visits may become very, very difficult for the patients as the disease progresses because this, the because the stages increases, patient's cooperation falls down. The incapability, the motor inability becomes, the cognitive impairment increases and becomes very difficult for the patient to understand and very difficult for a caregiver to handle the patient in that way. So you need to make sure that as early you can manage the patient, try to correct the problem, go for preventive treatment. Patient has dry mouth, there are a lot of there are a lot of things which I could advise when you have dry mouth, we have artificial saliva substitutes, burning mouth syndrome, we have got so many things which can reduce the burning mouth of those patients. There are 
there, what pitch of greens to be advised, what what a cross size to be advised, everything can be given and can be considered. But only thing is, we have to make sure that everyone in the dental office and everyone from the patient side or the caregiver side should be aware of the history of the patient, the disease of the patient, and all the documentation has to be done. Properly. Understanding the dental risk is very important. That, as I said to you before, that because of the motor and cognitive disturbances in these patients, it affects their hygiene, maintenance, and toothbrushing. Because these Parkinson patients alter the face and tongue muscle activity, it affects chewing also. You will not believe that it, it can also land up in swallowing problems. And when these patients have got a very high risk of getting aspiration pneumonia, they may get choking also. So I even mean, that has to be considered as a dentist. Gum disease, yes. So there are high chances of gum disease. If patients have got gum disease, we need to make sure that you treat the gum disease as minimally possible, as non-surgically possible, because the gum disease, as I said, has also a risk factor, increasing the chances of the severity of Parkinson and contributing to the severity of Parkinson. So you need to make sure that the gum disease is also corrected. The, the hygiene has to be maintained. And then, uh, lastly, some people with Parkinson's are taking immunosuppressing medication because they have got some other autoimmune problems. Some example, rheumatoid arthritis is there. Some, some patients may be taking clozapine. So these medicines will lead to immunosuppression. Patients may have less WBC, less platelets. So patients may have or immunosuppression. So when patients have immunosuppression, what happens? In the mouth, you get opportunistic infections. So you will see canadiasis in the patient's mouth. You will see gum disease in patient's mouth. So you need to also understand that why a patient is having these issues. And patient being in immunosuppression uh, drugs or an immunosuppression condition will have so many other infections which are only because of that. So even that has to be taken care and prevention has to be taken care. So these are one of the most important aspects. In a brief, crisp way, I've tried to give tips to the caregivers and to my dental friends and colleagues that this is how we can manage these patients very comfortably. And it would be a, uh, it, it would be a very, uh, very um, uh, important and integral part as a caregiver to understand the oral hygiene maintenance of patients and to understand that why exactly not only oral hygiene is maintained just for the sake of uh, because it's a daily protocol of rinsing and brushing but also the importance of oral hygiene could affects and contributes to the disease is something very very important for you to consider. So uh, I conclude and I really appreciate the caregivers who have been doing a lot and uh, really Dobara also for appreciating and, and contributing so much for the caregivers and helping them so much and uh, motivating all the older adults of us who can actually live life comfortably like a normal person, maintaining their hygiene with themselves or the help of a caregiver and we as a dentist are always a supportive team as a healthcare professional. We are always there. So thank you all and thank you Dobara for giving me the opportunity I hope things are clear. And if anything else is there, I'm open for discussion and QA now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Dr. Ashank, um, if you are okay with it, uh, is it all right with you if on our website we share um, your? Uh, practice information so if anyone would like to contact you directly they are able to mm -hmm. and then um, also we will open up our emails if anyone wants to send in any messages ask any questions because I think that that water floss system is of great interest to a lot so maybe we can do a little spotlight post on that um, we can we can actually have a brief uh, briefing on uh, water flossing or maybe i could uh, do a demonstration on it directly on the live because I, I think the people who didn't watch the last week's session are wondering, is it only for caregivers? And I, in the chat, I put in that mm -hmm. it's, it's for anyone who is interested. So I think they, that will be of great interest uh, to find out if they can buy it. Discussion on water flosser about the types and indications, contraindications. There's no contraindication, but, but the indications that everyone can uh, get a little insight on it. I'll, 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 I'll exactly focus on it maybe next time some maybe or, or maybe a separate video on that and then uh, we can put on the website of the bar so that everyone is helped. It's basically for the humanity and everyone when it is available not only a water flosser there are the uh, about uh, your powered flosses also 
and about uh, the electric brushes also. So, what are the uh, oral hygiene products which which are replaced or which could be replaced for our geriatric population? We will focus on that, and then we can and maybe because. i cannot talk about one single brand because that's that's a copyright so definitely i would uh, be helpful or maybe i will be glad to help individually if someone needs it so that they can procure it that that sounds like a very good plan so um if anyone does contact us we'll share uh with yeah, you sure, sure. someone is near to us or someone is in india or hyderabad we even have customized brushes for some people so i can also go for customization of some brushes depending upon the uh, your teeth depending upon the gaps between the teeth there's a lot of stuff which i could help people if if so whatever it is i'm always there so uh, dobara yes for older uh, uh, older friends of mine but also for youngsters even they should be very aware because everyone has to fall into that part of life so that is by nature and everyone should take care of that's yeah you're so right it's so important our de- dental care is so intrinsic with our overall care oh. um and uh, dr ashank will you also give us a little teaser of our next week's session so everyone is excited and looking forward to that one uh, for the next yeah yeah uh, definitely for the next week session we will uh, actually focus on uh, what are the changes in your mouth which happens with aging as the age progresses what are the changes in your teeth changes in your gums changes in your cheek changes in your overall oral health changes with aging that is one part of the presentation in that again the second part will be uh, the most common what are the changes which you see about that in diabetic people because that is something very common and almost present in most of the people from middle age nowadays from even middle age people are suffering from it even uh, even type 1 happens in something in children also so diabetes and oral health changes and how can we as a periodontist help to diagnose diabetes just seeing your gums what are the changes what you notice with diabetes and what are the special care to be taken oral health tips for diabetic individuals this is what will be the next session so anything else has to be included to that i'll be always glad to include even that also so that is not Perfect. Thank you. That sounds uh, excellent. I will open up the email uh, team at dobara dot o r g. If anyone has any questions, um, uh, we will share them with Dr. Ashang, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week, same day, Thursday at six p.m. India time. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Oh, Mama uh, Matin Ansari wants to say something. Yeah. Dr. Ashank, I was particularly impressed by the list of um, equipment you mentioned for taking care of uh, patients. Because I have been dealing with some and uh, the kidney tray and the gloves and those minute details that has really been very, very. And you've gone into such detail. I am truly impressed and obliged for your help. No issue, ma'am. It's always my pleasure because. because normally what happens is giving uh, sitting at one position and giving oral hygiene tips is very easy any anyone can sit and do and read and tell but 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 thing is i i wanted practically that everyone can do it at home so that is why i thought it's better to give the list of things which you should actually be available at your home or or at for every caregiver so that you can actually practically start using it from tomorrow or today itself in fact because that is why i wanted to maybe that list also we can update on the dobara website especially correct and uh, correct. And, and, and who are genuinely uh, taking uh, consideration of this one as a caregiver they can access that and they can directly uh, reach on to me for exactly uh, what is the patient's problem and i could guide them what exactly of which brand they can procure thank you Because thank you very much dr ashan no problem i'm always It's a pleasure been such a pleasure Sorry. we admire you very much <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much